never know if this thing is live or not. Okay, I think we are live now. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining me here today. My name is Adrian Bradley, and this is the Daycare Q&A Show. And thank you for joining me here this morning. I am going to do what I normally do and try and keep up with any comments on my laptop over here because sometimes I can't see it there on the main screen. But anyway, good morning. Uh, this is January 24th. Well, can you believe it's already the 24th of January? I mean, I don't know about you, but this month is flying because, I mean, I feel like we just brought in the new year and it's already almost the end of January. But anyway, it is January 24th, 2024, and this is episode 29 of the Daycare Q&A show. And if you are joining me live, first of all, welcome. And if you are... Um, well, if you're new, welcome. Sorry, I didn't even get to my disclaimer. That the dogs were inside. But um, if you are coming back, welcome back. And um, hopefully, it'll stop. Rooney, Rooney, any little noise? This is why. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. But anyway, if, if you are catching this on replay, please. Um, Send me, um, say a little comment, say hi, and if you're catching this live, please leave me some hearts and likes so I can see you. And yeah, and if you are catching this on our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. That way you get notification and hit the bell. That way you get notification um, whenever um, a replay goes up and you can get caught up on all of the past episodes and maybe binge listen or binge watch if you have time for that we I would love that and yeah and if you need to leave before the the show is over I typically go about an hour um, sometimes a little bit less but uh, you can always catch up on the YouTube channel and if you do me a favor and maybe leave a comment over there that helps the channel grow and reach more people and like I said you get notified every time um, if you subscribe and hit the bell you get notified every time um, I put up a video. That would be great. I would really appreciate that. Um, so I always start off with a few housekeeping notes. And the first one typically is to tell you that <laughs> the dogs are either inside or outside. And it's been dreary and rainy this week. It's supposed to stop. I'm here in California, in Southern California. And it was supposed to have stopped. And it's not raining now, but it looks like it could start at any moment. So I kind of have the dogs inside just because it's kind of cold. So hopefully um, the one won't be so disruptive. <laughs> but I just want you to know they're there in case he barks out like that, like he did a second ago. Um, because it startles me, it might startle you. Okay, so anyway, secondly... Um, I always give a bit of a disclaimer in saying that um, any of the issues that are brought up here that I, I have an opinion or I, I speak about and give an opinion or uh, we talk about here is based on my own experience over 20 years um, being a child care provider and owning and running my own child care business or someone close to me um, and their experience with something similar. Um, but as I always say, you know, this is your business. If you have your own business and sometimes things aren't, well, not sometimes, things aren't, not everything is for everyone. And so if you hear something that you vibe with, that you think might work in your own business or you want to adopt, then that's great. That's what the show's here for. But if in case there's something that you really just don't feel is a good fit for your business, then just leave that okay it's probably for someone else like I said not everything is for everyone so take what works and leave the rest okay all right and third if you are joining me live or even if you're catching this on replay and you have a question that you'd like me to address on the show or to respond to please just leave it in the chat or the comments and if you are joining me live I'll try to get to it before the show is over 
and if um, I don't or if you're catching this on replay then I'll come back in and I'll answer it in the comments okay so uh, let's see so I already said you can catch up on the um, YouTube channel I am trying to get caught up with some of the replays but um, until the replay is available on our channel I do keep it here in in on the page so you can always come to the page and catch up on this week's um, episode um, the following day if you happen to have missed it um, I don't remove it until I put it up on the channel all right so let's see what's going on in the child care the thriving child care universe so first today our um, show is sponsored by the um, provider planner and organizer I can't talk and I always do this I always go to the wrong side <laughs> that is our um, Stripe version behind me here of the provider planner and organizer and that is our luxury planner just for uh, child care providers and um, right now I always say this but right now is still the beginning of the year um, so if you're looking to lay out your plans and your goals for 2024 using a planner is a great way to um, stay accountable to lay those plans out so that you know what you're trying to accomplish throughout the year maybe you can check in on yourself I like to check in um, on my business at least on a quarterly basis to see if I'm on track with my goals and using my planner is a really good way to get those plans down so that I can tell if I'm if I'm accomplishing them or if I need to maybe um, change some things or if in case something new is added that I want to accomplish this year I use my planner to uh, stay up with that so right now the planner is 20% off and it has free shipping so there is a link in the comments where you can go over and check out the planner you can flip through all the pages you can see what it has to offer and um, our planner some other planners are not true hard book planners um, ours is we actually have quite a few different versions of the planner it comes in the hard book and I mean a hardcover planner with gold um, corner covers so that it um, doesn't get all dog-eared um, as you use it and carry it with you um, we also have it in a soft cover um, we have it in an ebook version and we just added um, this month we added a digital version so in case you use your tablet or you want to use your tablet um, there's a version for you to use it with good notes and so we've co we're covering all the bases we want to make sure that uh, providers have this planner and are able to use it this year to accomplish the goals that they have for 2024 so when you get time maybe after the show click the link and go over and check the planner out like I said you can flip through all the pages and you can see what it has to offer all right all right um, let's see so last week I wrote on the blog I am the author of the thriving child care blog so you can go there at thrivingchildcare.com and check out our blog and last week I wrote on crafting your child care sick and illness policy and this is pretty timely not only for this time of year but for today's show because there's a question that we'll be getting to in a few um, that directly relates to our sick and illness policy and um, go, so go over and check that out um, the week before I talked about how there are a few things that we should do for our business every single year and one of those things was to uh, review our sick and illness policy to see what needs to be changed um, or added or you know and you might think well why, why should I do that when I have a, a solid policy um, already in place but you know things change you know um, the flu rate changes now we have to deal with COVID so it's just good to review it and make sure all your bases are covered maybe and I'll get into this later when we get into that question that addresses it but maybe there's some things in there that you want to make sure that you reiterate to both your new and your um, existing clients 
about your policy because we are in flu, flu season right now and coming off the holidays, they always say that the COVID rate spikes as well. We have RSV to deal with. So all of this going on makes it a really good time to go and look at your policy and just make sure if, you know, there's some things that you want to add or even remind yourself, you know, sometimes I would forget specifics of when um, the children could be uh, could return to care and that's something you want to have top of mind in case a parent asks you if a child gets sick when they can return or what your policy is for them returning what are the specifics of your policy um, so I'll get into more of that later but go over and check out that post um, it is crafting your child care your child care sick and illness policy made easy and um, yeah so go over and check that out on the blog there is a link in the comments for you to go over and check out that post okay um and i've been saying for the last couple of weeks that we added a new feature um i like it because um it it is directly well it it is it exactly how i like to consume content because i am usually multitasking like most of us and um i like to listen to um, a lot of the podcasts and blogs that um, I follow and we added a feature where you can listen to the audio version now of most of the blog posts on the um, on the blog so uh, in case you're out you know um, running errands like I usually am when I'm listening or if you're at nap time and you want to pop your earphones in and listen to um, some of the posts that we have on the blog that is a great way to get this information and yeah I love it um, let me know what you think about it if you do go over and try it but I I, I want to make it as easy as possible for you to uh, get this content because I know that you're busy. I, I know. I absolutely um, understand. <laughs> All right. So uh, this morning we are going to get into some questions submitted by um, our fellow daycare owners. But before we do that, I usually go to the planner. This is our soft cover version. And I look to see what's going on this week because the planner, that's what the planner has that's unique to our planner. It has a lot of observances that, they're real observances. My daughter doesn't think so sometimes, but they're real observances um, or national days um, that we can build maybe a curriculum around or a project. Uh, sometimes we can build um, a snack or a meal around. And so I just kind of like to... Um, keep you abreast of what's going on this week um, in the planner and I'm just gonna scroll down here and make sure I'm not missing anybody okay all right so I haven't missed any comments just yet all right so don't forget to say hi when you join me okay all right so let's see what's going on this week so today is the 24th like I said of January and today is National Peanut Butter Day now I know that there's a lot of kids that have peanut allergies and if you have children that um, that are allergic to peanuts um, or nuts then this is probably something you don't want to um, create a meal around um, but maybe there's a project or something that you could um, talk about peanuts um, where are they har how are they harvested where do peanuts come from you know, you can talk about something like that. Maybe there's a story in your uh, library that talks about nuts and peanuts or, or or maybe even just harvesting things. Maybe maybe that's how you can um, address that if you don't want to include that in a meal. And believe you me, don't come for me. I know, I know how many kids have peanut allergies and you might just want to avoid that altogether. But I just thought I'd let you know that today is National Peanut Butter Day. I actually love peanut butter and jelly, so I might be having that for lunch. I don't know. Um, and the 28th, which is, I think that's Sunday. Let me check. Yeah, it is Sunday, is National Blueberry Pancake Day. And blueberry pancakes are, are my favorite. I, I really am not just saying that. When I go out, if that's on the menu, that's what I get. And um, one of the restaurants that my husband and I went to, um, I can't remember which one it is, but they took it off the menu. It's not available anymore. And I was so bummed because 
I just love that. I mean, it just goes to my dark side because it, it's from a scene in Pulp Fiction. And ever since I saw that movie, I have been ordering blueberry pancakes. But anyway, so the 28th, which is Sunday, is Blueberry Pancake Day. Maybe you want to celebrate that. If you're going to celebrate, maybe you want to celebrate that the following day. Again, you don't have to necessarily make blueberry pancakes. Maybe you want to just talk about where blueberries come from and um yeah you can talk about where blueberries come from or the color blue or something like that um and then the 29th which is monday is national puzzle day so that might be um a great day to pull out some old puzzles that you have maybe put some new ones in a rotation maybe put them out on the table and have them ready for the kids when they arrive and you can talk about puzzle day um, yeah and then the following uh, no not the following day but the 31st which is next Wednesday I'm just gonna let you know about it now I'll probably talk about it again next week but that is national backward day and that's one of my <laughs> favorite days in the planner because you don't really have to prepare for that. You can have the kids um, maybe turn their shirts backwards or put their jackets on backwards. I don't know if you want to put their pants on backwards. It might, <laughs> might not be good for them. They might be running around and, and I don't know if that would make them fall or whatever. But the 31st of January is National Backward Day. So those that's what's coming on in the planner that's what's going on this week and now let's get into some of these questions okay um i'm going to take a sip of water because i always get dry mouth and i don't want to kind of keep from coughing today okay so let's get into some of the questions um that providers have sent in okay so the first one oh before I do that, I typically, well, every week I've been asking you a question. So if you would, before I get into the questions, here's my question for you. Um, I believe I put this up in the group um, either today or yesterday, but what is the nicest thing or the best compliment that you think a parent has given you? And I said it that way on purpose because it may not have been meant as a compliment. And I, I, I've talked about that. Uh, someone made a comment about me years ago. And I don't think they meant it as a compliment, but I took it that way because it went to my professionalism and me as a businesswoman. And so I was proud to wear that mantle. So sometimes people don't necessarily mean um, to be complimentary, but depending on what's said, it can very well be that. And we don't ne necessarily have to take everything that's meant to be negative in a negative way. So my question to you is, um, what did I say? How did I say it? <laughs> um, what do you believe is the best compliment a parent has given you whether it was meant as a compliment or not meant as a compliment so if you would put that in the comments put that in the chat i would love to know what that is okay all right let's get into some of these questions now all right so uh the first question is hey adrian need a bit of advice on a situation with our family dog so I've gotten in, oh, okay, so I've got it in the contract that parents are responsible for any medical expenses if their child accidentally hurts our dog. However, I've noticed that sometimes new parents seem to be a bit upset about it and push back when they see it in writing. I really believe it's my business and my rules. Um, and the safety of both the kids and our dog is a top priority. How can I address this concern with new parents without causing any tension? I want everyone to feel comfortable, but also ensure that our fur, fur baby stays safe. Any thoughts on how to handle this? Okay, so first of all, what would you say to this um, fellow provider? Uh, what, what do you have in your, um, if, you have, if you have pets, 
I guess it doesn't necessarily need to be a dog. It could be a cat. It could be another animal. I know a friend of mine, she said she had a rabbit. Um, but do you have a policy around your pet and the involvement or um, how it's involved Yeah, in the child care, in your business, during the day or when the kids are there? Um, what is your policy? What would you, um, what's worked for you? Um, I can say, okay, well, first of all, you heard me in the intro make mention of my dogs, and I love, love my, my babies. I do. Um, my husband and I are empty nesters, and um, maybe that has something to do with it, but um, they are my loves. I, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not overboard with it, but um, I, I do make sure I care for them and take care of them and, and worry over them sometimes. I mean, I was telling my nephew um, over Christmas, he was over, and I was telling him that when I leave, I have my Echo Dot, I don't want to say her name because she'll come alive, I have the Echo Dot set for a routine that if the dogs bark, because one of them has, she has anxiety, she's older. And so I have it set for if the dogs bark, I think it's three times, or if they bark three times in a row, then it will start to play some soothing music. And some, he looked at me like I was crazy. And I was, I, I was proud to tell him, I, yeah. But I mean, it's available to me, so why not? And I know that she has anxiety, and it's very easy to set that up. My daughter showed me how to set up routines. So excuse me, I use routines with the Echo Dot, and when I saw that that was available, why not, you know? I also have it set up to play um, some jazz um, in the morning um, if I'm not here, um, just to soothe her. And I think that they get used to it, and um, if it's playing when I'm not here, maybe they can get used to um, hearing it, and maybe that's a soothing thing. Kind of like, I don't want to put the kids in the in the same realm as an animal, but I know that um, my childcare children, once I started playing the music, they kind of got a little tired, because they knew this was our routine, right? So, I said all that to say I can definitely empathize and understand what it's like to have a pet and to be running a child care and to be concerned about, you know, your your pet getting hurt because we all know that children don't necessarily understand boundaries and 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 um interacting with pets especially they see a pet they think it's cute they don't understand that pulling on the tail it doesn't that it really irritates the animal or they don't really they don't really get it yet especially if they don't have a pet at home um, a lot of the children that I care for they did have some pet so they were used to uh, being around an animal but I will say this many years ago when um, one of my first clients it was a little girl she was a school-age girl um, she was a little hyperactive and at the time we had another dog he's since passed away and I don't think he was acting aggressively toward her I don't at the time he was a puppy and he was he was full size but he was still a puppy's age and she kind of got him excited and he was he was free roaming at the time and um, he jumped up and at the same time she jumped up and he caught her hand in his mouth and um, it was like a little puncture, right? So it wasn't that serious. I'm not even sure it drew blood, um, but it did scare her a bit, all right? And like I said, he wasn't trying to bite her, I don't believe, and I was standing right there. Um, but he got excited, and this is, and, and see, that's, that's the thing that can happen. Things happen, even, not even involving animals. Things happen in split second with kids and um, you know you can imagine if you just turned or you weren't there for half a second or whatever you might not know what happened but for me that incident was enough to make me make a change and um, 
I'll get into um, something that one of my LPAs or my licensing analysts had said too in a second. But um, yeah, I I decided that I didn't want the dog, my dog, to interact with the kids at the childcare after that incident because. Even though that incident, like I said, it wasn't that serious and, um, you know, it wasn't elevated or it didn't have to, you know, she wasn't, she wasn't hurt. She wasn't really hurt. Um, that that was the outcome of that situation. It doesn't mean that the next time it wasn't going to be something more serious. Either the animal could get hurt or the child could get hurt. And I just wasn't willing to deal with that um, or put my business on the line or, or you know, keeping the kids safe and keeping my my dog safe was very important to me and so for me the best thing to do was to separate them um, so we built uh, a dog run or dog pin at that location and that's where the dog was during the daycare hours and we made sure to go let him out as soon as the daycare kids were gone and um, I made sure that the, the children knew they were not to go over by the pen. Um, again, he wasn't an aggressive animal. And I don't think probably anybody who has an aggressive animal probably is trying to run a child care with that animal free roaming. But like I said, that was a decision I made. It alleviated um, my, most of my concerns about anything like that ever happening again. And again, I would always say to um, other providers over the years, um, and even some of my closest um, colleagues in my own network, that you do have to consider liability. You really do. You're running a child care and caring for, m most of the time, other people's children. And so you have the responsibility of, like I said, keeping them safe. And, um, yeah, and I think, I think that for me, it's, it's just best to think about the worst case scenario, okay? And I know that sounds, that sounds, that doesn't sound optimistic, but consider the worst case scenario. You're going to hope for the best, but plan for the worst. I'm sure you've heard that before, right? So what is the worst case scenario with the children at your child care interacting with your animal if you have a pet. And and so build your policy around that. And a moment ago I said that um, my LPA had said something to me about it. And I don't know, you know, a lot of times when you're dealing with your licensing analyst, it's very subjective. It depends on that particular analyst, what they share, what they think, or what they believe. But I do remember one of them suggesting that they not interact. And so either that happened before I made that change or maybe even after and I explained that, that they don't. I don't know. But that was the decision that I made for my own business. Now, I do know that, well, I'm here in California and I always say that because laws are different depending on where you are. And here we are allowed to have an animal or a pet. Um, but I can't remember if they give specific, I'm sure in the regs there's specifics about about that. But we are allowed to have them. We just need to say that we have them. And I think make our clients aware that we have them. But um, let me see what's in the comments. Hi, Helena. Good morning. I want to see what you have to say about, um, about this topic. Um, Helena says, I had a dog that was with us the first two years I was open. He was older and he mostly slept and the children loved him. Since I chose my children, it keeps moving on me, hold on. Since I chose my children, I didn't think to have a policy about if they hurt, sorry, it keeps moving on me, about if they hurt the animals other than a possible termination. I don't know what I was thinking, but we got a puppy. <laughs> he started nipping, so we immediately started keeping him separate. Um, we let him go outside with us, and now his nipping has gotten better. He's seven months, and so 
and so much like an infant toddler. Everything goes in his mouth. So he just visits for a few minutes and then he goes back to his area. He gets hyper and the children get hyper and they feed off each other. Exactly. I don't want any issues, so I think keeping them separate right now. Exactly. And you know what? I like how you said that. Um, I'm going to finish your comment. I like how you said that, though, that for now, because just like I was saying about the sick and illness policy, um, sometimes we need to make some changes. And um, it could be a positive, well, I'm going to say any change would be to achieve a positive outcome. But maybe as the dog gets older you don't have that issue anymore and maybe maybe you want to integrate them more into the child care um that's something that you could certainly look at or maybe you want to make a blanket policy so you just you know you don't have that that concern um helena continues she says i have two big rescue dogs and they are never with the children um i have bubbles um in the wood fence so they can see each other. I guess Bubbles is the name of the dog. That's so cute. That's so cute. Yeah, I mean, um, and Denitra, Denitra's here. Hi, Denitra. Um, yeah, I, I just, again, I had that incident, so I think that really brought it top of mind. Um, that I just wasn't willing to take the chance of there being any incident. And to be honest, I was more concerned about the kids because um, the dog wasn't a big dog, but he was a medium-sized dog. But because of his, he was a mix. He was he was a rescue too, Helena. We got him um, when we bought our house, and my daughter said, "You said once we get once we move and we get the house, then." Um, we're going to get a dog. So we went to pet adoptions and we got the dog. But the dog was still puppy age, but it was a breed. It was a, it was a mixed breed, but part of the breed is known for being um, aggressive. Okay. It was a part chow and part um, golden retriever. Um, and Simba was his name and he was, he was really pretty docile and he was so smart and really sweet. But you know you it's an animal you never know they can have bad days too they cannot want to be annoyed they can things can happen and i was not willing to take the chance of something happening with one of the kids um yeah i mean he would get mad at me sometimes if I stared at him or something. I was just trying to make him mad. <laughs> but um it's an animal you don't know what what could happen and there's going to be people out there who say no my, my dog would never my dog would never it is still an animal and this goes for cats as well you know I've heard of and and, and there was a uh, and I'm going to move on because I don't want to spend I would spend too long on uh, the first question but um, there was a, I think a TikTok video or maybe it was a YouTube video and this cat was just the worst it was it was fierce and it would just attack the other cat and, and the dog and whatever <laughs> and I can't see anybody really trying to have kids around an animal like that I can't but yeah that was a decision I made but my point is I you have to make a decision for your situation but I would employ you to think about what is the worst case scenario okay and um, make your policy or or consider making a policy that protects you and protects your business and protects the kids first and foremost protects the kids um, Denitra Scott says like at McDonald's what are you talking about <laughs> okay let me go back up because it, this thing is not in order um, Denisha Scott says, and maybe a provider that insists on animals being an integral part of their program only enroll families that love and have a family dog at home. That way they may, may be more understanding if and when incidents happen. Yes. And that's what I was saying earlier. A lot of my clients, they did have, they did have pets themselves. So I, of course, would bring it up at the tour which I think you should. You should let them know right from the start that you have a pet. Um, and then speak about whether or not the pet is an integral part, like Denise was saying, in, 
in the program, meaning he's going to be around, the, the animal's going to be around the children um, for a good, good amount of time. Or if, in my case, that the animal has its own dog run or has its own pen and is, for the most part, kept away from the children. And I say for the most part because, you know, kids can sneak around and go where they're not supposed to go. We all know this. So, but you are making, or I was making the, the concerted effort to keep them apart the majority of the time, right? Um, Helena had something else to say. Let me roll down. Um, let me roll down. Okay, hold on. Oh, no, she said Bubbles is not the name of the dog. <laughs> She says, no, like the big bubbles on the playgrounds that you can see through. Oh, she means, um, you know, like a viewing thing that can, is a barrier that you can see through and they can um, see the see the pet, but not really um, interact with the pet or, or have um, in reach of the pet. She said, like McDonald's. I get it now. Sorry, Helena. I go off the rails too sometimes. <laughs> One of the big dogs can be, she's talking about one of her dogs, one of the big dogs can be protective and turn aggressive. Exactly. Um, and Denitra Scott says, and cats are so unpredictable and unapologetic. Exactly. It is their world. And you know, sometimes, you know what, sometimes I have to say this and then I'm going to move on to the second question, but um, sometimes animals, um, they don't vibe with certain certain people. And I know for my daughter, just about any cat does not like her. I mean, they will hiss at her. And I, I grew up with cats. Um, I had cats and dogs when I was coming up. And I loved my cats. Um, our cats would kind of roam the neighborhood and wasn't, weren't around all the time. But my daughter, um, and, and then when, when, um, when my boys were younger, we had a cat. And they love the cat. We didn't have a problem with the cat. But um, my daughter, they do not like her. And I've had that happen with some of my dogs over the years. I'm, I'm trying to remember if Simba, if there was, it wasn't a, a child in the child care, but I think it might have been uh, a friend or a family member that came over and he did not like them for some reason which personally I don't trust people who dogs don't like, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but so, so again, that just goes to the fact that you just never know. It's an unpredictable situation. And, you know, it could be that nothing happens, but are you willing to deal with the liability should something happen? So I think that that's where I'm going to leave it. Um, come into the comments. Let me know how you feel about this. If you have a pet, um, if you have a policy, or if you've had any any issues with any of your clients when it comes to you having the pet, please let us know um, how you've handled it, okay? All right, I'm going to move on to the second question. Um, and thanks, Helena. Thanks, um, Denitra, for um, sharing that. I appreciate your input on that. Okay, so it says, Hey, Adrian, I've been thinking about ways to boost my child care business, and I'm wondering if signing up for a Yelp subscription subscription is worth it. Um, have you ever tried it and did you see any significant benefits in terms of promoting your services on on the fence about it and would love to hear your thoughts or any experiences that you've had with it thanks a bunch okay let me know are you guys on Yelp um, and what I mean by that is well I guess I mean it in both ways because I don't know if you know it or not, but you don't necessarily have to go over and set up a Yelp account. Uh, clients and other people can <laughs> go and leave reviews for your business, whether you've done that or not. And that is my problem with Yelp. And I've had this stance for years. I do not like Yelp. Um, my husband will go to Yelp to find a restaurant and to look at reviews and I'm all for it <laughs> in that situation. But when it came to being a business owner and knowing that someone could just go to Yelp and um, leave information about my business when I did not choose to be on that platform just has never set well with me. I have never liked that. Um, now, to that point, 
I, of course, did not go over and put my business or buy a subscription on Yelp. So there's the answer to your question. I've never bought a subscription to Yelp. Um, I have watched enough pieces on the news and um, to, to feel like it wasn't, in my view, an impartial platform and that the people that bought subscriptions had more leverage over people who didn't. They were able to control what was said and whatnot. And that's another thing, too. Um, one of the issues that I have with Yelp, and this comes from... Um, a former hairdresser of mine and some other people that I know saying that who have asked me to go and leave a review for them um, the reviews were removed uh, for whatever reason by Yelp and these were not necessarily um, solicited reviews or um, I, I forget they, they, they just are unclear about the criteria that they will allow the review to remain and of course, the whole point of it is to is to have reviews there, or yeah, reviews for potential clients to kind of you know look over your business. And they don't um, keep reviews up. They will t they will remove them, um, especially if they think they were solicited or if it was from some time ago. I mean, who knows? And I just don't I just don't agree with that. I really don't. Honestly, I think it, it, it would be better for you to solicit um, reviews from your clients and have them leave them on Google um, and for you to collect them and put them on your own website. That's another perfect application for your website because most of the time when people are checking out your business at some point they're going to go to your website anyway and if testimonials and reviews are there that is probably one of the first things they're going to look at so i would say if you don't have that there and what you can do by the way is if you do have your clients leave a review for you on google which by the way i think is far more effective because most people google child care if they're looking for excuse me child care services um, uh, so if you have a review on Google and I'll leave a link um, to a training that I did a free training that I did on how to set up a profile on Google for your business and then you can go in and um, or, or the parents can go in and um, leave those reviews and it'll be tied to that profile I'll come in and leave that link later but um, yeah, so they can see it on Google, which a lot of people feel is a reliable authority on for information. They can see it on Google and then on your website. So um, I don't like using, yeah, that is my personal opinion. You guys come in and tell me if you have, and I'm going to scroll down so I don't miss anything. Um, let's see, Helena says... Um, I haven't done anything with Yelp. 95% of my prospective parents say they found me on Google. And I've paid nothing to be on Google. Exactly. I just go in and make a few updates and add a few pictures every few months. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, again, I am going to come back and leave you that link where you can go in and um, set up your, your own business profile on Google. Google. But yeah exactly what she's saying. I found that to be the, the case for myself. Um, plus you can control that. Um, now I'm not suggesting that um, that if you are deserving of a bad review that the public doesn't doesn't deserve to know that. I'm not saying that. Um, and as a matter of fact I won't say anything about that. <laughs> but uh, I don't like that when there's something positive to say that it can be removed arbitrarily and you, you you know we're trying to run businesses and we need to reach clients this is what I hear all of the time and if we're using something to build up our clientele then I don't need it to be unreliable I don't need people making decisions that I don't have any control over um, when it comes to that um, now I will tell you 
that even though I just said I do not have a profile on Yelp that I've set up and that I do not like Yelp and I gave you all those reasons, I did have a client leave a bad review for me on Yelp. This was years ago. And by the way, there were some positive ones there too. Now again, I didn't set that up over on Yelp. But but like I said, people can go and leave anonymous, not anonymous, they can leave um they can leave reviews over there whether you've set up a profile over there or not. So anyway, this client was upset about um she was withdrawing and she was upset that she wasn't going to get back her deposit. I think that's what it was. Usually it's something like that, by the way. It, yeah. So anyway, she didn't go over and say that, of course. She went over and said that she did not think that uh, the kids were being fed properly. And um, something, yeah, that when she picks up her child, typically her child is hungry. And so... The kids weren't being fed and whatnot. Now, I'll tell you this. Because I'm not on Yelp, I didn't even know that this review was over there. I had a colleague call and tell me that it was on Yelp. And I was like, what? And so I went over and I read it. And by the way, you can reply to comments left. And that I, I did write an article about this, about my situation and another colleague of mine having a bad review on Yelp and what you can do about it. Especially if it's unwarranted. Especially if it's unwarranted. But um, anyway, so she let me know that the review was there. And um, I was like, okay, I'm going to reply. I took my time because you, got, you guys know, if, if you know me, you know that I... I know who I am and I know that it is best for me to put space and time in between a reaction or me <laughs> um, or an action. And so that's what I did. I took about two to three days to reply because I wanted I wanted to reply in a professional way. I wanted to reply um, in an irrefutable way. And so what I did was I thought about it. And this client, by the way, had been with me for two years. So in the reply on Yelp, I said something to the effect, and I could probably go back and look at it now, but something to the effect of, I am so sorry that uh, she felt the need to leave this review, but I'm also certain that no one would leave their child in a child care for two plus two and a half years I think it was if they felt that their child was not being cared for or fed properly and don't you know there was nothing that could be said because that kind of turns the tables you know what I mean because if you're saying that then this has happened the whole time but you stayed for two and a half years so know that if you do get a review on Yelp that is inaccurate or is um, I, I had another colleague someone left a review and this is why this is another reason why I do not like that platform someone left a review for her business her business is here in California like mine the person leaving the review was in Chicago they had never visited her business and they got the name confused or something and they left this horrible review. I mean, she was she was almost in tears. You know what I mean? Because when you leave a review, it's usually the the first one up. You know, so it's the first one some people are uh, people are going to see when they go to Yelp and look up your business. So she was really really upset, and I had to calm her down. And Yelp was at first not willing to go in and remove it. Even though she told them she's in California, this person's in Chicago, they've never visited her business or anything. They were not helpful. They were not helpful. And I I do believe she finally, but it took a lot of effort for her to get that down. And that just really made me upset because it was like so obvious that it was bogus. You know what I mean? Um, Helena says, let's see. Okay, I'm going to go down. Um, Helena says, I did ask parents to go 
um, put reviews, but gave them a couple of different places my business shows up for them to do them on. That, yeah, I love that. I, I did the same thing, Helena. Um, she said, I need to go check Yelp because I haven't thought about it in a while. Yeah. You do need to check on Yelp, even if you don't have a subscription or even a, a profile up on Yelp, just to see what's there. You know, you're running a business. You need to see what people are seeing about your business, whether it's it's just kind of, kind of like your credit report. You need to stay on top of that and make sure it's accurate and it has the correct information. This is the same about your business. And last thing I'll say about this, um, what Helena just said, I built in... Um, kind of an automation that um, with my new clients uh, I think after after they were with me for a little while or whatever um, they would be sent an email asking them if they would mind putting up a review I mean I sent it to when I started this I sent it to my former clients as well or even my existing clients that have been with me for a while asking for a review and telling them where to go to leave it Okay, so for me it was Google, and again, I'll come back in and leave that link for that training. It's super simple to set up your profile, and then what you do is you tell the parents to go on Google and just leave uh, um, a authentic, accurate review for you and for your business, and that it would, it would really help you. I'm going to open the window. I'm hot. Um, yeah, and so they did. And um, like I said, that's worked, in my view, much better than uh, setting up a subscription on Yelp. I mean, you can leave in the comments if you feel differently or if you've had really good results with Yelp or you love Yelp. Like I said, my husband uses Yelp for restaurants and different activities and places that we go. And I don't have the account, so it's fine with <laughs> me. He can do that. And I do like to see... But you know what? I'll say this, and then I'm going to move on to the last one because we're running out of time. There are people in this world, and I probably don't need to tell you, there are people in this world that love to complain and love to be negative. And that's sad, but it's a fact. And, you know, some people just love the anonymity of the online space. There's no face. They can say whatever. I, I've told you guys here before about different comments people have made. And you kind of have to get a thick skin and just let it be water off a duck's back at some point because there are these people in the world. And if you respond to them, if you um, try and reason with a person like that, sometimes it just, it just snowballs, you know. And I just prefer to take the air out of the situation and not, not give it any 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 life so that's the last thing I'll say about that but do come in in the comments let me know what you think about Yelp and whether you have an account on Yelp and if it's helped your business or if you think it's hurt your business or what you think about about Yelp okay last question um, I want to stay on time so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make this one pretty short it says um, hey Adrian I've been wrestling with a stomach flu policy question and could use your advice. Uh, when it comes to kids with diarrhea, I'm a bit unsure about when it's safe for them to return to childcare. I wanna be cautious, especially considering the risk of exposure to my own family. But here's the tricky part. Some parents seem to prioritize their work over their sick child's care and can get a bit annoyed when I ask them to keep the child home until they are fully recovered. How do you handle such situations and any tips on communicating the importance of keeping the children's environment healthy for everyone? I really want to strike a balance here without compromising the well-being of the kids or my own family. Appreciate your insights. Appreciate any insights you can share. Okay. So, like I said at the top of the show, we were going to talk about uh, sick and illness. And I know I've left this for the last question and we're running out of time. But... Um, like I said a couple of weeks ago, this to me is one of the, the, the must do reviews every year. And it's because things change. You are faced with different, um, even different flu strains, right? From year to year. And there could be, um, uh, 
a widespread or it could be lesser it could be something else that that is more prevalent as far as illnesses um, in any given year so looking at your sick and illness policy every year is a good thing to do it yeah so that being said the first thing I would say to this provider is to go and see what because I don't know where you are I'm in California and like I said before it could be different everywhere um, Helena I'm sure is in another state um, I think she's told me that before she's in another state Helena come back and tell me uh, what state you're in um, if you're still there um, so the, the regs could be different the, the the rules could be different so I would start there what do the rules say about um, sick children in child care where you're at here we have specific rules start there and then let me just say this first of all go over and check out that blog post that I have linked here in the comments about developing your sick and illness policy how you can do it really easily but let me just say that when I say go and check and see what your what your um, your licensing body has to say about it um, that's just a start you are the business owner you are the child care provider you can you can amp that up you can make uh, you can make your own policy around that I would say that the bare minimum needs to be what the state says you have to do for sure but if you want to say let's say that the policy or the rules say that 24 hours after the last symptom um, they can return to care if you want to say 48 hours I mean and some people some providers might think well no Adrian that's not right if, if the state says that then um, that's not fair to the parent well what if you have a child that has an autoimmune situation or a elderly uh, grandparent that lives with you or another child in care and I say that because I had that very situation I had a client that just like this provider is saying was very lax uh, when her child got sick I mean literally this child had at one point pink eye and she she had to pick up the child and she wasn't happy about that and then she took the child to the doctor and got the medication for pink eye and called me on the way from the doctor's office saying could she bring them back could she bring the child back because he now had the medication I said no so there's another thing you are gonna have to enforce your policies I've said this a number of times and I know it can be uncomfortable but think about the fact that you have other children in care not to mention your own family exposed to whatever this is now I'm cold so I'm close to me <laughs> you have to um, consider that you have to consider um, the other children in care for sure and in this situation um, that same child that same family got sick with something else and it was not that serious it was a cold or maybe yeah some uh, like a yeah a cold or something and I had a child that was allergic to everything forget about the peanut butter everything she was allergic to eggs she was allergic to just about everything on every aisle in the grocery store and this child because she got exposed to whatever the other child had the other child it was pretty mild right she wound up in the hospital and I was sick about it I was so angry because I felt some responsibility because I felt like she probably got it from this other child and while it the and it probably wasn't as much my fault because he had I don't think it was uh, the flu I don't think it was I think it was a cold but for her her body didn't process it that way and that's what we've seen over the last few years right different people you don't know what their body how their body is going to respond and it can be pretty dire for somebody else and pretty mild for another person but we have the responsibility of making sure like this provider is understanding that we are trying to maintain a healthy 
environment for all, for all the kids, for ourselves, for our workers, for our own families. Um, you guys come in and let me know what um, what situations you've had when it came to your um, your uh, sick and illness. Helena says she's in Texas. Okay, I'm gonna get to this in a second. Helena, I had, and I'll say this one other time. I had another time where I don't even know. I, I I'm pretty sure it was a parent that got sick at work and came to pick their child up and exposed all of us. And it ran through the child care. Not one person was in touch, including myself, my husband. I think my daughter got sick, but all of the kids got sick. And it was one of those, it was the flu. It, it was, this was many years ago, so not COVID. It was the flu. And it was with diarrhea. It was absolutely awful. And it lasted like three days, you know, with stomach pains and all this kind of stuff. And it was a parent that brought it in. So when I would talk to new, uh, new prospective clients at a tour, I would bring up that one incident and I would let them know because most of the time, you know, at the tour, the parents are all too willing to hear about your, your aggressive sick and illness policy. And that is until they're affected, until it's their child or, you know, they, they have to come pick up their child and they, but anyway, that was, that was one of the worst times. One of the worst times. Helena says, um, let's see, I don't want to, I don't want to miss anything. Okay. So Helena says she's in Texas, but I have been in other states and in military care. Oh, wow. Um, I have a pretty strict sick and illness policy. I'm going to scroll back up because it keeps moving. Um, I don't play because if I get sick, I can't provide care. Exactly. If you get sick, everybody's got to stay home. Okay. Um, if the children get sick, um, then their families get sick. It's immediate termination if they bring them knowing they are sick. I'm going to roll back up. Wait a minute. Knowing they are sick. And I can prove it in any way. She's saying, she, you know, yeah. And I've, I've, I've had a couple parents that did that. Um, and they admitted to it. You know what I mean? They absolutely, that was so mad. I mean, you could probably, if when I, you can see everything on my face. Whether I'm happy or I'm, a, I'm perturbed or I'm annoyed or I'm upset. And, and I was really mad about that. Because this was a parent that was very concerned about their child getting sick at child care. And yet and still, when your child's sick, you're not willing to have the same concerns for everyone else. Um, Helena continues. She says, "I only enroll families who say they have a back, they have backup care, or can make arrangements with work if their child is sick or I'm sick. I just added to my policy that if anyone in the household is sick with something contagious, they cannot be in care." I'm gonna roll back up. They cannot be in care. I also added that they are to message me before coming um, to care for my approval to attend. If they just show up and mention it, they will be sent home. I was sick of everything being allergies, <laughs> right, um, from a specific family, and then it ended up being strep and RSV, um, etc. Exactly. I can't even tell you, I'm sure other providers will relate. It's always, oh, they're just teething. That used to say they have a few. Uh, oh, they're just teething. Oh, um, they just have allergies. No, no, no. Uh, first of all, when you've been doing this for a while, when you've been a provider for a while, you can almost scope things out before it even gets serious. I can tell when a child is about to get pink eye because I've seen it enough times. Okay, and no, I'm not a doctor. I've just seen it enough times. I've seen that. I've seen the lead up to it. I've seen the symptoms. So I, I, I'm trying not only to protect the environment for the children. I'm also trying to help the parent take them in early, get the medication. You know what I mean? Um, but literally, guys, I, I will have to say this, and I will stop because we've gone a little bit over. But seriously. There are parents that do not consider that their child is ever going to get sick. I literally have told you guys here on this show that that one family that I was talking about that was pretty lax, 
she asked me in the beginning I had the I had the children I had two of her two of her children from infancy and from the time I met her she was I said something about the sick and illness policy right and she said they can get sick and I just looked at her like they're human of course they can get sick I didn't even know how to answer her but that I just want to share with you is the level of naivete I guess and it's just I'm not trying to be disparaging I'm just trying to say that they they haven't experienced this so they're not aware they're not thinking about that they're thinking about their precious little baby that they now have to care for and everything else in the world is what they have to protect that child against not the other way around and we need to make sure that we are like Helena was saying and like I was saying earlier make sure that the environment and that means for everyone who's in the environment stays as healthy as possible of course there's going to be colds and and minor things but even with a cold when they I, I don't know about everywhere but even with the cold here in California if they have um, uncontrollable um, runny nose or it's a, a different color um, then they, they we're advised to tell them they need to stay home and again it is to keep the environment the other children and yourself safe if you get sick like that time I got the flu with everybody else the whole the whole childcare had to shut down. So nobody wants that, and um, yeah. So you're not always gonna be uh, able to not um, say something that parents want to hear. Did I say that right? <laughs> you know, there's gonna be some times that you have to enforce these policies, but. Once you do, you will get used to it. And once you explain to them, like Helena and like even this provider is saying, that you are trying to keep everyone healthy and safe, and especially guys in this world that we live in now with COVID, there are probably going to be incidents where you have to say, if anyone in the house has COVID, then the child cannot come to child care. I, that's just where we're at. That's just where we are. So, anyway, I will stop. We went a little bit over today, but you know what? Thank you so much, Helena. Thank you so much, Denitra, for your input on these questions. And again, if you have any, any feedback or comments about any of the questions that we addressed today, please come into the comments and leave your opinion. I'm not the only... Uh, provider in the room and Helena and, and Denitra aren't either and um, maybe what you say will resonate with someone who needs to hear it so please I encourage you to come back in and leave your opinion as well all right so that is it for the questions this week remember if you have a question that you'd like me to address on the show you don't have to wait till next week and, and you don't even have to show up you can you can leave your question and I will address it on the show and maybe you can catch it um, on replay when you have time just go to thrivingchildcare.com slash what's your question that's thrivingchildcare.com slash what's your question and you can leave it there and I will address it on the show next week and what am I about to say I don't even know <laughs> I'm Adrian Bradley from Thriving Child Care and your host for the daycare Q&A show and thank you for watching or joining in this week I will see you next week and until then keep thriving see you next week